Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce 29th Annual Daniel H. Burnham Award Dinner. At home now, back on stage soon, Chicago artists and arts organizations bet your bottom dollar you'll lose your blues in Chicago. Chicago, Chicago, that toddling town. Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you around. I love it, bet your bottom dollar you lose the blues in Chicago, Chicago, the town that Billy Sunday couldn't shut down. On State Street, that great street, I just want to say, they do things they don't do. The time, the time of their life. I saw Manny dance with his wife in Chicago. And now, please welcome President and Chief Executive Officer of the Chicago Land Chamber of Commerce, Jack Lavin. Thank you to Chamber Member and Sponsor ABC7 Chicago for producing that video. Chicago, that toddling town, which exudes what we all desire, experiencing live performances in our famed theaters and music venues, dining at our world-class restaurants, and gathering for the annual meeting at the Hyatt or the Burnham Dinner at the Hilton. These are the things that give Chicago its unique character and culture, the place we love and call home. Let's find ways to support these industries in every way we can to get through these challenging times. I know the Chamber is fighting every day for more resources and to reopen these industries safely as soon as possible. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 29th annual Daniel H. Burnham Award Dinner. Burnham's famous quote encouraging us to make no little plans serves as an inspiration to look forward and create a region that is both a great place to live and work. The Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce Daniel H. Burnham Award for Distinguished Leadership is meant to pay tribute to prominent business leaders who embrace civic service and promote Chicago's business and philanthropic community. This year's recipient stands among the best as we face the greatest health crisis in generations. Tonight, we are honored to present this prestigious award to Maurice Smith, President and CEO of Healthcare Service Corporation. Maurice has long been a part of Chicago's leadership community, previously serving as president of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. He is an example of the next generation of Chicago's leaders and has quickly made his mark on our region. I have personally seen the passion he has for investing and hiring in our neighborhoods and buying from local firms. He strongly believes in all communities of Chicago and demonstrates a keen understanding of the impact this core belief has in bringing jobs and opportunity to every part of our city. We are excited for the opportunity to recognize him this evening. More than a century since it was published, the Burnham Plan continues to influence Chicago and serve as a reference and blueprint worldwide for how to create a vibrant, dynamic city. With the COVID-19 pandemic and cries for racial equality ringing in our streets, Perhaps our city has never been in a more important crossroad of reimagination. In our role as the largest independent voice for business, the Chamber is committed to help Chicagoland rebuild, redefine, 
and reimagine the future. In short, make big plans. Tonight is a vivid reminder of the power, strength, and resiliency of our business community. I am honored and grateful for the support all of you have provided for this year's dinner, and I want to extend my thanks to tonight's major sponsors. Our exclusive presenting sponsor for the fourth consecutive year, CIBC. I am especially grateful to CIBC for their support and new multi-year commitment to the Burnham Dinner. Thank you to Bruce Lubin and CIBC. Our leadership sponsor, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. And our benefactor sponsors, Aon, BDO USA, BMO Harris Bank, Exelon, GCM Grosvenor, ITW, Landmark Development, Mesero Financial, Motorola Solutions, PNC, and Walgreens. Thank you to all our sponsors. Your support of this event, our largest fundraiser of the year, helps ensure we can continue to advocate for our members and bring you the programming and resources you need to grow your business. Thank you for being with us this evening and for your partnership with the Chamber. I would also like to thank the entire Chamber staff who work tirelessly to support our members and advance Chicago's economic growth. Their hard work, determination, and creativity have helped us reimagine the work of the Chamber. And of course, I want to thank my wife, Kathy, for tuning in and for all of her support. She is the CEO of Gateway to Learning and a, Chicago and a Chamber member, facing many of the challenges that we all are during this pandemic. I could not get through all of this without you. Now it is my great honor to welcome the Senior Executive of the Office of Catholic Collaboration at DePaul University and a great friend of the Chamber and Chicago business community, Monsignor Kenneth Velo. In the continued tradition of the Burnham Award dinner, he will deliver tonight's invocation. Monsignor Velo. Thanks, Jack, and thanks for your leadership all these years. You know, given my association with the business community and, and the Chamber itself, I have to tell you, I'm the luckiest priest in the city of Chicago. And Maurice Smith, congratulations. Welcome, welcome to this wonderful group of men and women who are leaders in Chicago. You're in a distinguished group of Chicagoans. You know, these have been difficult months. Uh, and this last week has been extremely difficult because I think we saw the division within our nation and we see the need that we have for healing and unity. What should we have? What should we do? I think there's a four letter word, just a four letter word that I think we need right now. Hope, hope. You know, there was a musical play, The Carousel. It was written in 1945 after World War II. And the song you may remember is, you'll never walk alone. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high, walk with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone. As the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce, the business community moves forward. May we always walk with hope together. To that end, this night, I pray God bless you all and bless us with hope. Amen. Enjoy the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Chair of CIBC USA and Chairman of Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, Bruce Lubin. Good evening. Thank you, Monsignor Velo, for being with us and your continued support of the business community. I am very proud of the dual role I have tonight as a representative of CIBC and as chair of the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. This is CIBC's fourth year as presenting sponsor. We share the chamber's strong commitment to drive a dynamic economy through business leadership and advocacy. And we are proud to celebrate all that business does for our city by continuing to be the presenting sponsor of this distinguished dinner and celebration of our outstanding business leadership. Both CIBC and the Chamber recognize and appreciate the important contributions you, as business leaders, make to our great city. Thank you for joining us virtually this evening, a slight difference from years past. Last year, we had a great event and we're fortunate to be gathered at the beautiful Hilton Chicago to highlight the business community and the many accomplishments from the year. But tonight, we find ourselves in a more challenging time. With that comes a tremendous opportunity to reimagine this city 
and lay new foundations for the future. That's exactly why we continue to gather and recognize business leaders who make no little plans, especially when times are tough. In 2019, which feels like an eternity ago, my friend and chair of the U.S. Region for CIBC, Larry Richmond, joined the ranks of many other great leaders who have earned the prestigious Daniel H. Burnham Award for Distinguished Leadership. These business leaders are the dreamers, the doers, the architects, and the engineers that have made historic changes in our beloved city. The proof is all around us. Look at the magnificent Millennium Park. Look at the ever-growing O'Hare International Airport. Look at the much-needed reforms the Chicago Public Schools. Over the past 29 years, each of these things began or was dramatically expanded when a Daniel Burnham Award winner had a vision and brought people together to execute it. Let's take a moment to recognize the 28 previous winners of this prestigious award and thank them for their tireless efforts to make Chicago a global city and for their continued support of the Chicago and Chamber of Commerce. The Burnham Award recipients had hand, have handed us a blueprint and a foundation for creating the greatest city the world has ever known. The Chamber is now using those plans to build a better, stronger, and more inclusive Chicago for generations to come. For all of those reasons, this evening we are delighted to honor Maurice Smith, President and CEO of Healthcare Service Corporation, with the Burnham Award for Distinguished Leadership. Maurice has a bold vision to healthcare and leads a company that is headquartered in the city's central business district and is making major investments in Chicago's neighborhoods with new facilities and hundreds of new jobs. His vision is a message of balance between development downtown and the neighborhoods, for which the Chamber has been a strong advocate, in turn making our business community and city more vibrant and inclusive. We are delighted to honor and celebrate Maurice this evening, and I look forward to watching the exclusive interview with him in just a few moments. I have always been moved by the way Chicago businesses join together in support of our city, but I am extremely proud of our community in light of the challenges we now face. Now is the time for ingenuity and innovation. Now is the time for collaboration and collective problem solving. The Chamber and your community have been at the forefront of change that is needed today, which will have tremendous, far-reaching implications for our city and state. I want to provide a little detail of what that looks like and thank everyone involved in this work. We're getting Chicago's economy back open and businesses back on their feet. The Chamber's Economic Recovery Task Force, which I was honored to co-chair alongside Joe Dominguez of ComEd and Robin L. Brown of Ingredient Incorporated, is leading this work. Right now, we are fiercely advocating for hospitality, restaurants, and small businesses that are struggling to stay afloat. As we work to rebuild our economy, we need to place equity at the heart of our approach. The Chamber's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Task Force is creating opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses. For the business community to succeed, we must inspire inclusivity and lead by example. We oppose the graduated income tax constitutional amendment and are pleased that Illinoisans understand and demand that reforms are needed before new revenue. The Chamber stands ready to work with business leaders in Illinois, as well as Governor Pritzker, Mayor Lightfoot, and all our elected officials. We must make historic reforms and get our fiscal house back on track to stabilize our state, fully right our finances, grow our economy, and make the Illinois business community thrive. These initiatives are critical for business, both now and in the long term. Through all of this, our membership remains strong thanks to all of you. Tonight is also a testament to your wonderful support of the Chamber. I am pleased to report that this year's event has the highest ever participation of our board member companies. That's an achievement we can all be proud of, especially in these challenging times. 
I would like to take a moment to recognize the Chamber's board whose members drive events like this one and all the initiatives and influence of the Chicagoland Chamber. These individuals, as well as their organizations, are doing work that delivers a positive business climate and creates jobs to grow our population and economy. Thank you all. I would also like to thank Jack and the entire Chamber staff for all they do for us, the business community, day in and day out. They have helped the Chamber continue to take the leadership role in advocating for resources, reforms, and reduced regulations to drive our economic recovery. Business will lead our economic recovery, and the Chamber will lead our business community. Finally, thank you, the business leaders, for your support of the Chamber, and thank you for being here with us tonight. We all have ambitions. They may be your personal ambitions, your business goals, your hopes for those you love. And no matter the size, big or small, they are uniquely yours. At CIBC, we embrace your ambitions and help you turn them into possibilities reimagined. With over 150 years of financial experience and a team of experts with decades working alongside our clients, we are proud to be part of building strong communities, thriving businesses, and helping you reach your financial goals. We are CIBC, committed to making your ambitions real. We've worked closely with the Chamber of Commerce as a part of their Economic Recovery Task Force to provide guidance to the Mayor's Office around legislation and ideas to support local businesses during COVID-19. But it doesn't stop there. We as small businesses have to work closely with our local chambers to ensure that our needs are met and our voices are heard. And the Chicago Land Chamber of Commerce is at the forefront of this effort and we truly appreciate all that they do. Thank you. I also wanna thank the chamber who's always been there for us and has helped with uh, public relations and, and uh, with all sorts of information that we've needed along the way. And really, we are heartened that while things are still not back to normal and while it may be a while for them to go back to normal, what I think is becoming a part of our future is a lot more togetherness and loving kindness. And that makes us feel very optimistic about the future because we've seen what it is that this city can do. To me, the most special thing about Mesro Financial is the entrepreneurial environment that we have. Allowing our businesses to work together to solve clients' problems is I think the best result that we can have. We're always inspired to do what's best for our clients and be as successful as we can in finding solutions for them. I'm really proud that we bring the search for solutions to the communities that we serve as well. The Economic Recovery Task Force was convened to determine what recommendations were necessary to reopen Chicagoland businesses closed due to COVID-19. The Chamber and the Chicagoland business leaders worked together to develop conditions for reopening, such as having safe public transit options, ensuring availability of testing and PPE for frontline workers, and continued investments in our infrastructure all of which are still relevant today as we head into a new phase of this pandemic. The task force also recognized the profound impact the pandemic has had on communities of color. And because of this, the chamber developed the Chicago Pledge, which encourages the business community to buy locally, invest locally, hire locally, and finally to listen and learn. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome back President and CEO of the Chamber, Jack Lavin. The Burnham Dinner is an event we look forward to every year. I am honored to share this evening with our city's business and civic leaders. Like other events of our past, 
2020 will surely be one for the history books. However, I have a great deal of optimism for the resiliency of our great city. In the aftermath of the Chicago fire, it was the business community that set a plan to rebuild the city with astounding speed. Following the dot-com bust, it was the chamber and the business community that created the Chicagoland Entrepreneurial Center, which later spawned the world-renowned 1871 Tech Incubator. Revitalization of the Central Business District, the Chicago Flood, the Great Recession. Amid all these crises, it was the chamber and the business community that innovated, demonstrated resiliency, and reimagined the future of our city to bring back jobs and investment. That brings us to 2020 and the greatest threat in modern history, the global pandemic. With little warning, we were forced to shelter in our homes, close our doors temporarily, and wait for guidance from experts and officials. While we sheltered in place, the chamber went into action and quickly pivoted all our programming online. We partnered and held virtual events with Senator Durbin, DCO Director Aaron Guthrie, and many others. We fought to reduce and delay new burdensome regulations, identify grant opportunities for businesses, and defer fees and taxes. We responded rapidly to get you the resources and information you need to fight through this pandemic. And then a second crisis hit, just as challenging to our economic future. Waves of civil unrest due to the racial inequality and social justice. Challenges encountered by the pandemic were now intensified by the losses and damages from looting. However, it was also a time to listen and learn and find new ways to do business with inclusion and equity at the forefront, forefront. Through it all, the Chamber extended its hand of support to get businesses and industries back up and running and get people back to work. The work of our Economic Recovery Task Force is expediting our rebound while prioritizing safety, trust, and equity. The Chamber's Small Business Development Center is doubling down on its support programs. We're working with the airlines to get people flying again. We're working with transit to get people back to work. And we are promoting the Chicago Pledge to buy locally, hire locally, and invest locally. And we're doing all of this through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion to create opportunity for all. We've been through tough times before. We've been knocked down, but we always get back up. Like the leaders before us, we too can rebuild and reimagine. I want you to know that the Chicagoland Chamber stands with you, the business community. Together, we will build the city of tomorrow. That starts with our people. Talent and workforce development must be the cornerstone of our modern Burnham plan. To remain competitive, we must attract and retain the best talent. We are actively finding new ways to connect to talent connect talent to companies with diversity and inclusion being a critical part of the equation. I encourage you to take advantage of the Chamber's apprenticeship and job training programs because they are helping build the workforce of tomorrow. The Blueprint for Tomorrow, tomorrow must also seek to reinvent and reimagine ourselves to serve the long-term needs of our great city, both in the Central Business District and our neighborhoods. That's why we are championing One Central, landmark development's multimodal hub that is reimagining transportation to grow the South Loop and create a gateway to opportunity to Chicago's South Side neighborhoods through a new model of public-private partnership. We're promoting Sterling Bay's Lincoln Yards, which combines vibrant residential and commercial spaces anchored by the ever-growing life sciences industry. And we're supporting the Discovery Partners Institute, the anchor of the 78, that will make Chicago a global destination for talent by attracting students and researchers from the University of Illinois and all our great colleges and universities. Together, these will bring economic recovery and generate hundreds of thousands of new jobs and billions of dollars of new investments. The Chamber has also fought for the infrastructure needed to compete in our new normal the modernization of O'Hare, and a capital bill that ensures there is sustainable transit funding. And the Chamber led the effort in Springfield to establish a new data center tax incentive. Already, we have seen companies commit to investing $3.5 billion in Illinois, and more will be invested 
to make us the modern hub of data, the currency of our global economy. But we also have a state and city with historic budget challenges and we need reforms before revenue. The chamber opposed the graduated income tax constitutional amendment, but now, as Bruce said, the difficult work begins. We must bring fiscal stability to the state so we are not among the highest property taxes and unfunded pension liabilities in the country. We need to be the leader and reform how pension and property taxes are managed so we have a stable fiscal future to bring jobs and growth to Chicagoland. These are the ingredients for success. All of this is reimagination at work. Reimagine talent, reimagine infrastructure, reimagine development to meet the new needs of our economy post COVID and reimagine fiscal stability in our city and state without the business community as an ATM. This is our modern day Burnham plan. This is our future. No matter what gets thrown our way, the business community always leads us through these challenges and back to opportunity. As the leader and independent voice of the business community, the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce stands ready to lead these efforts and ensure our global city remains the greatest in the world, the place we love and call home. Thank you again for your continued support, partnership and investment in the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce and for being with us tonight. What's next? What's next for our communities, for our companies? For every business, the question is, what do we do next? What do we do for our people and our customers? How do we move forward to define and create the best of what's next? People who know, know BDO. The Chicagoland Chamber team has done a phenomenal job with always staying front and center um, and hosting numerous events. Our organization, Keo Designs, has participated in the annual exchange every year. It's a great platform for us to meet uh, different organizations and fellow members. Uh, in addition, I have attended the business after business networking um, sessions. And again, you're, you're in a social setting um, and the premier luncheons are key, but more importantly, their team uh, will always follow up with you prior to any of those events and ask you, who do you want to meet? Who are the key people that you would like to be introduced to? And that has really been uh, instrumental and we've picked up business because of that. We know business keeps moving and however we connect, whether it's over the phone, online, or in your office, we're here to listen and provide solutions that help you run your business better because the decisions you make have far-reaching implications. And a relationship with a corporate bank like PNC can provide just what you need. As one of the nation's largest banks, PNC brings customized insights and a local approach to make informed choices now and in the future. It is now my distinct honor to introduce our next speaker who works tirelessly and passionately for the city. Mayor Lightfoot operates with integrity as her guiding North Star as she continues to transform our city and guide us through this pandemic and racial justice movement. We continue to work closely with the mayor and her administration to generate ideas and policies that bring economic development to every neighborhood while also strengthening our downtown central business district. I have personally seen Mayor Lightfoot's engagement and collaboration with the chamber and the business community. She understands the valuable role the business community plays in driving the recovery of our economy and growing Chicago so it remains a global city. Please join me in welcoming the mayor of the city of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. Hello everyone, I'm Mayor Lori Lightfoot and I'm honored to be with you all at this year's 29th annual Burnham Dinner. Each year, the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce presents the Daniel H. Burnham Award to a member of the business community that lives and breathes the words, quote, make no little plans. And as the events of this year have proven, it's never been more important to celebrate individuals in the business community who are doing just that. These are individuals like Maurice Smith, 
president and CEO of Healthcare Service Corporation and this year's recipient of the Daniel H. Burnham Award. Maurice's business acumen and civic leadership have made him a tremendous asset to our city. While leading HCSC and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, Maurice has also furthered significant investments and created jobs in our historic neighborhoods on our south and west sides. This includes initiatives such as opening a multi-purpose Blue Cross Blue Shield facility in the Morgan Park neighborhood, which will create 550 permanent jobs and recruit 69% of these new hires directly from the surrounding areas as well as plans to open a new Blue Cross Blue Shield office facility in Pilsen in 2021. This is just the kind of leadership that the Burnham Award celebrates. So Maurice, congratulations on this prestigious recognition. Your hard work is a shining example of how the public and private sectors can work together to ensure better futures and opportunities for our residents. Because in order to create positive, permanent change in our communities and their local economies, we must work together and work hard to support our fellow entrepreneurs, small business owners, and future business leaders, especially now. As Chicago's business leaders, you each have the opportunity to give back, to leave our city better than we found it, and pave the way for future businesses to plant their roots and grow in a resilient and inspiring city. Maurice, I want to give you a special personal thanks. I remember being with you on the day that we cut the ribbon, and the level of enthusiasm from local stakeholders was absolutely palpable. So thank you and thanks your team, because you've energized a part of the city that really needed it, um, and thank you for uh, betting on Chicago. I look forward to continuing to be a partner with you all in this work to move toward an economic recovery that is long lasting and inclusive of every corner of this great city. Thank you, enjoy tonight's event, and please continue to be safe. Thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, for being with us this evening and for all you do for our city. I'd now like to introduce one of Chicago's own who will entertain us this evening, Opal Staples. She has a presence that commands any stage. As a professional singer, songwriter, and actor, she has garnered industry-wide acclaim by giving her voice and talents to The Oprah Winfrey Show, Chicago PD, The Shy, and Empire. Those last three TV shows produced right here in Chicago at Chamber Member Cinespace. Opal has worked with award-winning artists Ramsey Lewis, David Foster, Stevie Wonder, and Seal. Her graceful spirit makes her a joy to work with. She is one of those performing artists that we cannot wait to see again in person, but we are delighted she is with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Opal Staples. Come on, you all, snap your fingers with us just like this. Listen, baby, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough, baby. If you need me, call me, no matter where you are, no matter how far. Don't worry, baby, just call my name, I'll be there in a hurry. Don't have to worry, cause baby, that I made of that. I'll be there when you want me.
I'm just weighing my options. The pod makes sense, and we're always here to help. Welcome back, everybody. Let's get started. Diversity is so important for the city of Chicago, and I really feel that the chamber is what's driving that uh, diversity within the city, especially among businesses and helping us really build bridges to our communities in Chicago that are underserved. And really, it's that uh, diversity of life experience, whether that be your age or your race or your gender or your skill set. And having the chamber give us the ability to all come together and really understand the city's problems and how we collectively, given all of our different life experiences, work experiences, can bring our solutions together to help this great city. Unless you have that, it's very difficult to come up with a holistic uh, solution for the great citizens of Chicago. Yeah, our experience with the chamber has been, uh, you know, different than we've seen in a lot of cities uh, where we've worked on, on large projects like One Central. The chamber has really been with us from the beginning. Uh, I, I've, I've said to Jack Lavin a number of times in the past, uh, we're more accustomed to seeing chambers show up uh, after, the, after the hard work is done. With Jack and the chamber, you know, they've been there with us as a partner since day one. They were instrumental in helping us put the feasibility together for the project, the whole public strategy, our legislation. Uh, you know, they've been instrumental in helping us shape the plan for One Central from day one. I believe Chicago is the one city in the United States that has the opportunity to lead uh, during this period of recovery and set the stage for the next generation of what our cities are going to be. Uh, I don't think there's another city in America that has the same opportunity to do what Chicago can do uh, you know, if action is taken now. It is now my honor to introduce the vice chair of the executive committee of the board of the Chicagoland Chamber, Kevin Cassidy. As Healthcare Service Corporation's chief growth officer, Kevin is responsible for the company's growth initiatives and strategic partnerships. He also oversees marketing, brand management, competitive analytics, collaboration with other Blue Cross Blue Shield plans, and the company's C1 Innovation Lab. He is active in his community, including Mercy Home for Boys and Girls as chair of the Ambassadors of Mercy. We are delighted to have Kevin with us this evening and are grateful for his support of the chamber. I personally wanna thank Kevin for his friendship and all he has done to help me be successful in my three years as CEO. He is a true champion of the chamber. Please join me in welcoming Kevin Cassidy. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kevin Cassidy, the Chief Growth Officer of Healthcare Service Corporation, HCSC for short. Though many of you folks know us as Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, Texas, Oklahoma, Montana, and New Mexico, headquartered right here in the great city of Chicago. I'm also proud board member of the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce, and I've been doing that for many years. I'd also like to note that I'm a lifelong Chicagoland resident. But tonight, I'm pleased to be here with the 2020 Burnham Award honoree, who happens to be my dear friend and colleague of over 25 years, Maurice Smith. Maurice is the president and CEO of our company, HCSC, and previously was the president of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. 
Those of you who know Maurice, either personally or by reputation, know that he is all in on making Chicago communities the best place to live, work, and play. He's truly dedicated to making our communities a better and more equitable place for everyone. In addition to providing health insurance, Maurice believes that improving economies, arming individuals with the right resources, and getting to the heart of health are paramount to improving lives in our communities. What is most exciting about Maurice is the potential of what he will accomplish. Although Maurice has only recently taken on reigns as CEO, he has already made tremendous impact in and around this city. I commend Maurice for what he has done in the past, his recent accomplishments, and I look forward to what he, what he has to come. With the partnership of businesses and individuals across our city, things will be great. We only have a few minutes together, so let's hear directly from Maurice about his perspectives on improving Chicago area communities. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Morgan Park facility. Glad to have you here, and I'm gonna introduce you to my colleague, Maurice Smith, as I just said a minute ago. Let me tell the, the folks a little bit about you. Maurice Smith, 25 year colleague and friend of mine and president and CEO of Healthcare Service Corporation, also known as Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And it sounds like we haven't been friends for our full time, but we've been colleagues for about 27, 28 years now, Kevin. So I'm assuming we've been friends a little bit shorter. I appreciate being here. As a, uh, as a longtime friend and colleague, I have some advice. This is a big award. You agree? I do agree. Well, don't let it get to your head. And I have a favor to ask. What is that? Can I borrow it for a couple days? Because I want to show it off to my mom and tell her that I played a big role in helping the company and you get this award. Absolutely. As long as it comes with my picture. <laughs> Deal. All right. <laughs> Good. So let's start with the here and now, Maurice. Yeah. We just recently had federal, state, and local elections. And when you think about those elections and people moving seats or parties changing um, the results, how does that impact how you think about our business and how you direct our company? Well, Kev, that's very interesting to me. I, I would tell you that there are gonna be a lot of people that opine on what the re election results mean. But I would tell you for HCSC, our aims are the same. We've always been committed for the last 90 years, committed to providing access to health care. That doesn't change. Our tactics may change, but our objectives are remain the same. So I look forward to working with whomever and whatever capacity to make sure that we yield the best benefit for those who we serve in all of our communities. You know, that sounds to me like a unique benefit. I don't think all companies can say that. You know, it's very interesting for us uh, in that um, one unique feature about Healthcare Service Corporation, HCSC, is that we're customer-owned. Uh, many organizations, uh, not a bad thing, but our shareholder-owned. So our stakeholder is always, first and foremost, about the member. And that's where we're gonna concentrate all our efforts about bringing new capabilities, products, access to the members. So we're very proud of that, and we're singularly focused on that. So Maurice, when we think about community development, uh, especially outside of downtown, I'm really proud that we have offices, bricks and mortar in South Lawndale, Pilsen, Pullman, and here in Morgan Park. Can you tell us a little bit about Morgan Park and the, the office and some of the communities it serves since we're hit it, sitting here tonight sharing this with our, our colleagues in the chamber? Absolutely, Kevin. I, you know, I, I would first say that um, just remind everyone um, that we did this in the last year and a half, two years. In two years, we moved a substantial part of our company, only not only serving the central business district downtown, but into the communities because on the same belief that we have, that we can empower our communities to empower our business, to empower our society. So specifically as it relates to Morgan Park, Morgan Park is a very interesting neighborhood. It's a great neighborhood of Chicago. It's uh, buttressed to the east with Maple Park and Roseland communities, two other great communities, and to the west by Beverly, and quickly moves out into the Chicago suburbs. What we saw is a unique opportunity to take a formerly abandoned retail entity, 120,000 square feet uh, building, turn that into an economic engine that served our business but also served our community. 
and we did that. We converted this abandoned retail store and converted to a beautiful space for 550 employees. This effort is, um, I couldn't be more proud to champion it, I must, I must admit. I know what it means to the community. I've heard from many of them in the community. I've heard from many of our leaders who've been here. Uh, the mayor has been here and partnered with us along the way. The governor's been here. The uh, congressional team has been here. The aldermen have been here. And more importantly, the people who live here have been here. We've hired from the community. We've committed it to the community. And more importantly, we've committed to Chicago land that we are going to be a difference maker. I can tell that many others are looking at us as a role model, and we're proud of that. But with that comes a commitment to do more, to make this be an example, a role model for others. I think we've done it, but we still have more to do. Morgan Park is really exciting, extremely exciting. But I would tell you, so is Pilsen, so is Pullman, you know, so is Lindale, and so is this strategy. We know it's working. We've seen early seeds of success. We believe in it, and we're not here to cut and run. We're here for the long haul, because we believe in this effort. You know, it's easy to say that we can do this one time. It is scalable, it's repeatable. Um, it's just really looking deep inside of your organization, saying if I have to do it anyway, how can I make sure that it has a multiplier effect? That's what we did, that's what we continue to do. It's a part of the thesis that we use in delivering what we do. I think this is what makes HCSC unique. Um, and we're, again, if we're gonna do it again, we're very proud of it, more to come. Maurice, I would like to personally congratulate you on the 2020 Daniel Burnham Award. Congratulations. Thank you. And you know, I think about his famous quote, make no little plans, make big plans. And when I think about that, and I think about our company, your leadership, but I also think about the chamber and how do those work together as you see things down the road? You know, Kevin, when I think about the role of the chamber and as it relates to what we do, you know, the, the chamber has an, uh, a very bold initiative and bold goal. The goal is to empower and grow Chicago businesses. When they do that, and they do do that, it's good for everyone. Growth in business means growth in our size of our business. Uh, growth in our business allows us to uh, be big enough, first of all, to be meaningful, to have a voice, to advocate for those who we serve. It allows us to invest in terms of capabilities and products it allows us to invest in neighborhoods and service areas. It allows us to invest in our employees who are ultimately gonna serve out our, our viewpoint, our mission. Um, this is why everything the Chamber does has a multiplier effect, similar to what we talk about, on what we do. So without a healthy business community, a strong business community, we will be unable to fulfill our goals that we're talking about here. I think you're right, it's terrific. Let's. Uh Let's see if you have any closing thoughts that you want to share with the chamber members that are, that are visiting with us tonight. I would just say this, um, you know, we always talk about our efforts, our community efforts, but I would just remind them that HGSC is a large company and we take that seriously. We're a large employer. We have over 25,000 employees. Over half of them are in Illinois and maybe with a big bonus of those employees sitting here in Chicago land. We see ourselves more than just an insurer. We see ourselves as a critical path to access for all. We have products and capabilities for all members. So irrespective of your station in life, your demographic, there's a, as a access, there's a pathway to HCSC. And we work really hard at making sure that happens. We have products in every county, every city, every reimbursement method, Medicaid, Medicare Advantage, commercial, individual. No one else can say that and be committed to it, not only when things are good, but all the time, no exception. That's who we are, that's who the people that work for this company are, and we're incredibly proud. It is now my distinct honor to present Maury Smith with the Daniel H. Burnham Award for Distinguished Leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President and CEO of Healthcare Services Corporation, and the 2020 Daniel Burnham Award winner, Maurice Smith. Thank you to Bruce, Jack, the executive board, and the entire Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. This is truly a great recognition. The chamber represents more than 1,000 organizations from all major industries. 
and its members employ more than 400,000 people and create more than $24 billion in local annual revenue. This is tremendous. The Chamber's work has been crucial to ensuring Chicago's business environment remains strong. Throughout the pandemic, the Chamber has helped shape the city's response through its ongoing advocacy and analysis. As CEO of Healthcare Service Corporation, I continually look for ways to innovate to provide access to high quality health care, to be a force multiplier, and to have an outsized positive impact on the members we serve. I am humbled and proud to receive the Chamber's Burnham Award, and I hope to continue to be of service to our great city, its business community, and its residents for years to come. Thank you. This isn't just a bandage. It's a badge of armor, of care, of respect, because it means you fight for the safety of those you love. When you come into Walgreens, you get a flu shot that's right for you and them. You become a flu fighter. Do your part and defend your crew against the flu. Walgreens. We're gonna take you back just a little bit.
one four is eight. Eight and eight is sixteen. Come on, baby, I'ma show you. Back to that same old place. Back to that same old place. Sweet, sweet home, Chicago. What a wonderful evening. Congratulations again to our honoree, Marie Smith, and special thanks to our entertainment, Opal Staples, for a beautiful performance. Thank you, everyone, for joining the 29th Annual Daniel H. Burnham Award Dinner and supporting the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. It was my honor to join you this evening. This concludes our program. We hope to see you in person soon. Have a good evening. Come on. Here we go. One more time, fellas. Come on. Here we go. Waiting for the break of day. Searching for something to say. Waiting.